noticeably alert. Rich K pulls out his gun. I don't know how he has one. <laughs> and Nerd K pulls out a book and some salt. Yeah, we had those contingency plans just in case. Black K, easily the most fearless of us, decides that we need to take advantage of the wind and set up camp. Forget everything. And we all help him. It's fine. Eventually, we have everything set up and we decide to retire for the night. I had some really bad nightmares that night. I can't remember what they were, but holy crap, I woke up just wet, covered in sweat. I woke up, I got dressed, and I go outside. Everyone, excluding Black Gay, looks like shit. Rich Gay pulls out his GPS and tries to find the castle. And then the worst thing happens. The GPS is not working. We all panic and reach for our cell phones. They're dead. That's not freaking possible. We charge them before coming up here. At this point, we're all freaked out. We're all super alarmed. We're not scared of, like, too spooky for me ghosts, but surviving in the wild. Now that's actually freaking scary. We all decide to back up and try to retrace our steps. While doing this, we end up more lost than when we started. Panic is beginning to set in when we hear something really loud behind us. All of us are on edge, so Rich K whips around, holding his gun and shouts, Come on out! At his command, a guy comes out of the forest, surprising all of us. He's holding his hands up, but he looks majorly annoyed. <laughs> he looks at us all pretty angry and asks us, what are you people doing here? The way he said, you people, was pretty weird thinking back on it. Is it because you're all gay? I don't know. That was kind of weird. You probably were all too fabulous for him. <laughs> also, to, to describe this guy, like, he looked weird. He was around six foot one. He had white skin and was wearing the weirdest clothes I'd ever seen. He was wearing a bloody cloak. Ew. No. And the weirdest thing, that he had this perfect face. Like, the kind you would see in a magazine. Like, literally, uh, perfect. Not a single acne mark or flaw. He was, like, too beautiful to even look human. Well, the guy was still, like, pretty mad. Black gay. Who, by the way, was not just a wannabe black guy in appearance took offense to this. Now a little backstory here. Black gay was a wannabe alpha. He got beat up a lot because he didn't know when to shut up. So he started learning some martial arts or something. I can't remember. And he eventually became the toughest mother ever around. And this made his attitude worse because now he could back up his threats. Black gay goes up to the guy and is nose to nose with him and is calling him a biatch and asks him what the hell he's doing here. This cloaked man looks annoyed now. Just before a fight can start, Rich Gay puts on his ass-kicking face and gets between them. He settles the situation and asks him who he is. The guy doesn't respond, but looks much less annoyed. He tells us that we really should leave. We're a bit relieved. And we ask him, okay, well, how do we get out of here? And at this, he nearly jumps back. You mean, you don't know how to get back? We all tell him, no, we're lost. He looks completely paranoid now. We all ask him, like, well, what's wrong? The guy's face shifts back to what it was before, and he tells us that we should do our best to find our way out. We're all, like, way confused. And Black Gay, who seems more busy than usual, tells us that he doesn't like this guy. When we ask him why, he just says, you know, man, something's just wrong with him. He starts to leave the way he came. The guy is seriously fast. 
The weirdest thing was, he wasn't even running, he was just gone. We chase after the guy, asking for help, but he's already out of here. Eventually, we decide to say screw it, and we go back to trying to get out of this stupid freaking forest. As the sun goes down, we had no choice, we had to set up camp again. But we're out of butane, so we can't even build a fire. When the nighttime comes, things now start to get really weird. We're all trying to sleep, but we all keep hearing sounds and noises from the forest. That sounded weird, like my stomach rumbling right now. <laughs> they sounded weird, all right. Like the sounds of a fight or something. Lots of grunts and shouting. And a weird shouting, like not the human kind. Well, what other shouting is there? The wind is seriously stirring, but the trees don't seem to be moving much. Black A convinces us, like, let's go see what's going on. Let's go investigate. So for the first time, we're pretty cautious, so we grab the gun, a torch, and some other stuff, and we head towards the noises. As we head towards the noise, we start feeling really creeped out. And trust me, we haven't felt this kind of feeling since we were 12. Nerd Gay seems to be getting the worst of it. He's clutching his Koran and reciting the Durad Sharif. As we get closer, the air seems to be ice cold. Something that definitely should not be happening in June. And then, when we get to where the noises were coming from, there's nothing. Just an empty clearing. We're all relieved that the noises are gone, but then a shiver goes up our spine and we all turn around. No, seriously, we all turned around like some synchronized dance move in a Bollywood film. And just as we move, something quickly darts out of our vision. <sighs> then, Rich Gay, in his eternal wisdom, whips out his gun and fires three rounds. Pow, pow, pow. That breaks the spell, and we all ask him what the... F he tells us. He saw something white, and on all fours, oh, moving way too fast. We all say we should move back to the campsite and sleep. Even Black A agrees. But one issue, though. Now we can't find the campsite. Okay, time to panic. This was not possible. We made sure to walk in a straight line and kept track. Everyone's blaming each other. Something was wrong. We were honest to goodness bros, we never did this before, and one time we got trapped in an abandoned World War II base, like this didn't feel right. Still, I managed to bring everyone under control, and we find a clearing where we can at least rest. Now we pick watches, I get the first watch, and so on. But Rich Gay seemed oddly angry to part with his gun. As I took the first watch, I couldn't help but look up. There was barely any moon, but the amount that there was seemed to completely be blocked out by the forest. Another weird thing was that the trees seemed to be curving inward like they were trying to contain us or something. When my watch came to an end, I woke up, nerd gay, and handed him the gun. I fell asleep pretty easily considering the circumstances. I had more nightmares that night, but nothing compared to being woken up by black gay screams. I wake up, and Black Gay is ranting. <laughs> I ask Rich Gay, who looked mad, what's going on, and he tells me that Nerd Gay never woke him for his watch. He was gone. We couldn't find Nerd Gay. We did, however, find the gun. Empty. At this point, we're all pretty angry, worried, creeped out. We looked for Nerd Gay, but it looked like he just vanished. No footprints. Nothing. <sighs> We're pretty sure he took the bullets for some reason, because the sound of a gunshot definitely would have woke us all up. While we're calling for him, we find another stranger. This time, it's a woman. And I'll be damned if this isn't the hottest girl we've ever seen. I thought that they were all gay. Well, I guess maybe it doesn't matter. Literally a flawless face and is wearing a cloak very similar to the one 
we saw on the guy earlier. She seems to be pretty pissed at us for being in her area. When we explained that we're lost, her face becomes white. She doesn't reply after that and asks us, and I sh sh you not, has one of you gone missing? We're all alarmed by that. Black gay, nerd gay's best friend is about to kick her ass, and he starts screaming at her and asks her what she knows about nerd gay. We try to calm him down, but he rushes at her, intent on kicking her ass, and then the weirdest thing happens. The girl doesn't even react, but catches black gay's punches and kicks, and hits him straight in the nuts so hard we hear something snap. <laughs> That should not have been possible. <laughs> Black K is buff. He's fast as F. No person should have been able to catch his punch. And it's at that moment, I think we're not dealing with a person after all. She looks a bit pissed, but just walks off while we tend to Black K. Rich K chases after her, but comes back without a clue of where she went. Then, while we're sitting, looking, for Nerd Gay, we find our old camp. And guess who's just sitting opposite the remains of the fire? Frickin' Nerd Gay. When he stands up so we can see him, he has this weird, full face smile on his face, like a Cheshire cat's grin or something. The first thing we feel is relief, like, oh my gosh, we found him, but then we feel angry. We're mad, like, how could you walk off? And he apologizes profusely, saying that he had to use the facilities, and we were pretty sure he meant toilet and found the camp. When we asked him about the ammo and the gun, he's surprised, and for the first time, that creepy smile drops. He's telling us he doesn't know what we're talking about, and we agree, after a heated conversation, to drop it. We start making plans on how to get out when Nerd Gay starts giggling. It starts as a chuckle, but then becomes a full-blown laugh. We're all a bit creeped out, and Black Gay, fearless as he is, asks Nerd Gay what's wrong with him. And he just says that he was in remembrance. We're kind of confused, but Nerd Gay has always been a little weird. We don't want to leave camp, so when night falls, we just stay where we are. And later that night, Rich Gay and Black Gay wake me. They're saying that something's wrong with Nerd Gay, and we need to go out and check what's going on. I suspect it, too. So after a conversation on what to do, we decide to go outside and look around the camp area, but we'll keep track this time to avoid getting lost. We all head out and make sure not to disturb Nerd Gay in his tent. And we head out. The air gets cold again, and it's literally, like, freezing cold. We could see our breath. It was so cold. Then it hits us. Oof. It's a smell. A smell that Black Gay tells us he recognizes as the son of a butcher. It's a smell of dead meat, dude. We follow Black Gay and his super sniffer nose, and what we find nearly kills us. It's Nerd Gay, although the body looks like it was torn apart. What is even worse is that... Gosh, guys, I'm sorry, but this is difficult for me to write. He was my friend, you know. His body is infested with maggots. It looks like it's been dead for ages. His copy of his Quran is, however, placed on a tree stump that's next to him. We did what anyone would do. We puked. Oh. After some sobbing and shouts, Jesus, we ran from the scene and get to a clearing. We're all hysterical. <laughs> what happened? And then Rich back. See, then Rich Gay looks nearly apocalyptical. I ask him what's wrong, apart from the obvious, and he says, if that was Nerd Gay, 
is back at camp. <gasps> oh, shh. We're all freaked the F out. Nerdgay was our primary spirit expert and stuff. Like, he's not around anymore. How are we supposed to figure this out? As we begin to shout at each other, Black Gay in the middle of one of his rants just stops. Just as we're about to ask him what's wrong, he points directly ahead. It's Nerd Gay. Or rather, what looks like Nerd Gay. It's not smiling anymore. 